Good morning. We are in another MPC uh, session. The first talk is universally composable subversion of resilient cryptography. And Bernardo will give the talk. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Bernardo. So I'll give, uh, I'll talk about universally composable subversion resilient cryptography. So this is a joint work with Shuvradip Chakraborty, Jasper Bull Nielsen, and uh, Daniele Venturi. Okay, so first, like a little background on, on subversion. So this is about the setting where there is like this very powerful adversary that is able to like uh, tamper with the, the implementation uh, of the honest parties in a protocol, can like replace the party or, or change the specification and do all that. So, I mean, this actually started like back in the 80s and 90s, but this really like picked up more steam after like uh, Edward Snowden's revelation about... Uh, like all these intelligence agencies, like putting this type of attack forward and other players. So this is actually like took off like almost 10 years ago. And the current uh, state of affairs in, the, in this area is that, uh, I mean, we have different, like many different models, but all of them, I mean, they have the, the, the problem that it only uh, imply like standalone security. So if you want to build like a larger protocol, like composed of, of uh, smaller parties, like the, the current models uh, don't allow you to, to show security, like in this case of, of composition, right? So what we do here is we extend the, the universal composition framework of Canetti to accommodate for, uh, for subversion. So in particular, we, we look into reverse virals, which uh, was, was proposed in Eurocrypt 15, which is about uh, like... Uh, like a piece of uh, hardware or code that just sits between like a party and uh, the external world that just sanitizes the communication to, to and from this party. So then to, to showcase, I mean, our model, we just build uh, like a commitment, uh, sanitizable commitments, coin toss, and then we build the malicious MPC like by sanitizing GMW compiler. So before, I mean, we start like talking about the model, like a very, very quick, like uh, UC recap. So it's just to make sure, I mean, we're all on the same page. So in the UC, you, you usually like define what is called like, an ideal functionality for a task. And this is uh, secured by definition, right? So for example, if you have like a commitment uh, functionality, I mean, this just uh, has uh, like a trusted third party that will just uh, take the messages and then send the opening to, to the other parties when this is over. So the goal is to implement to to build a protocol that implements this functionality. So what this uh, this means in UC terminology is that you need to build uh, a protocol that such that you build like the simulator S that uh, will communicate with th this environment, right? Such that I mean the view of the environment in these two worlds uh, needs to be indistinguishable. So the the environment cannot know if it's like running the real protocol, the real adversary, and the parties or if it's talking to the simulator, like in an ideal world with this functionality that is secure by, by definition. So now in our model to, to accommodate for these reverse virals, we split like every like party in the protocol into two parties now. So we have a core and a firewall. So the core is responsible to, to computing every message of the protocol, like all the crypto, everything happens in the core and the firewall just, uh, sits there like sanitizing every message that the, the core sends or receives. So in, uh, uh, in the UC, like uh, these two parties, now that we split the core and the firewall, they are like independent parties. Okay, so in particular, they can be like independently corrupted and they cannot communicate with each other directly, right? Only through the ideal functionalities. So in following like previous work, the type of corruption that, that we allow is what we call like a, like a specious corruption, which is something that looks uh, like good on the surface, but uh, I mean, it's still doing something bad. It's like leaking information like through, via, via some subliminal channel or has like some secret trigger message uh, that is shared with the adversary that allows it to extract some message. Because it, it's not hard to see that but some functionality is like arbitrary type of, uh, of corruption we cannot uh, provide security for because like a firewall simply cannot uh, sanitize in some cases. 
So we need to, to restrict to this type of specious corruptions. So one like important notion uh, in our model is that of sanitizable ideal functionality. So this is an ideal functionality that will have like a, like a dedicated sanitation interface that we call, which is to communicate only to, with the firewalls. So the, the course use this IO, this input output interface on the top and only the firewall that uses the sanitation interface. And like a protocol implementing something like this would look like, uh, like a, each party is a core and a firewall, right? And they talk to, here is, is shown in this G hybrid model, which is the protocol using some other functionality. And note that like the, the core and the firewall, they both implement the, the, I mean, the interface of F, right? The firewall here implements the sanitation interface because later on there will be like some, some other firewall that will connect to this, right? I mean, another thing that, that we obviously can do is just sanitize like a normal uh, UC functionality that we have. For example, this functionality F, think of like as, as a coin toss, for example, and then we want like a sanitized coin toss. And then the, the protocol that implements it would look something like this. I mean, it, the protocol would have a firewall, even though the, the functionality does not, right? But to, like the, for the protocol to sanitize, it will have the, the, the firewall and the, the core. And this dotted line here goes more or less like the, the, the usual flow of communication inside a, a sanitizable functionality. You can see like the, the C1, I mean, when it sends a message to functionality, usually gets rerouted to the firewall that can do some processing just to, to later on get gets forward to the other party that goes first through the firewall of the other party and then out. So to, to, to have a protocol to, to show that realizes this functionality, we need like some wrapper around this functionality, right? Because it's like a normal functionality doesn't have the sanitation interface. So we need something to take care of all this boilerplate code like just so you can show that, uh, I mean, that the environment cannot uh, trivially distinguish like the two cases because just like the number of parties and so on. So another like important uh, notion for like this uh, regular DC functionalities that you want to build a firewall from is transparency. So, so if you have like an honest uh, core and you put a firewall like uh, in, in between its communication, you don't want this firewall to change the communication behavior of the core. So, so it needs to be transparent to the firewall, like to the honest uh, core, if this firewall is even there. Right? So, I mean, now that we have like this uh, two separate parties and we have like some other types of uh, uh, corruptions, I mean, now we have like all these different like corruption patterns, right? that uh, would have to build like a simulator from. So, so that's why like the crime phase because you have like too many like corruption patterns now. But I mean, so the idea is to map like all these corruption patterns into some behavior like for the party in the functionality. So upon the like, closer inspection, I mean, we don't need of course to take care of all of these, but just a few because the others are just special cases of some. So for example, like the malicious here at the bottom, and then we look at the specious and honest uh, firewall, this would give uh, something that is like a, uh, like a specious corruption, let's say. And then you have like honest firewall and a, uh, honest core and a malicious firewall. This will give what we call like an isolated uh, party in the functionality, because this, this could be that the firewall is just simply like cutting the communication of the, of the, the party with the outside, for example. And then like honest and semi-honest, like the semi-honest firewall here is just to, to, I mean, to not allow for like trivial solutions where like all the secrets are transferred to the firewall and then it can just compute the protocol itself. So, okay, let's get rid of all the other ones and let's focus on this four now. So specious and honest, this is the most interesting one, right? Is the one that we want to show that if you have like a specious uh, corruption in an honest firewall, this should like, it gives us like an honest party in the functionality, right? I mean, that's the whole point of the firewall. So we have this, this notion of uh, strong sanitation that we, that we have. Uh, and what is very nice is that this allows us to, to like through an indistinguishability argument, like, uh, like just show that an environment cannot distinguish like a, a specious core, like together with an honest firewall from an honest core and an honest firewall. So, we, I mean, you don't need to analyze this case in the, simu in the simulator, that, that's like the good news. I mean, you just prove like, like a separate lemma, like on your firewall. So now 
like we're back to these three cases. Now the isolated, I mean, could be think of like for some functionalities to have like some security with a board type of thing. But uh, like for many cases, I mean, you, you could also map this like to malicious if, if you don't care about the, the like this flavor of security, for example, like in CoinToss, I mean, we just need to map to malicious. And then we're back like to this just two cases, right? That we need to consider in the simulator. So that, that's good news. I mean, we only need to look at honest core, semi-honest firewall and malicious and malicious. And like you prove the strong sanitation on the side. So how, how do we do uh, uh, like commitment, for example, for example, right? In, in this model. So the first thing we need to define what is a sanitizable commitment functionality. So you take like the normal commitment functionality where parties send like message, uh, they commit, and then uh, later on the functionality opens to, to the receiver and we add the sanitation interface. So this interface, every time like a party like uh, tries to commit to something, the firewall like sign the, sorry, the functionality signals the firewall and the firewall gets the chance to, to blind like the, this message, for example, to, to sanitize it. And then like uh, uh, when it opens, it gets like the sanitized uh, input. So we build this like an IUC commitment, like uh, was inspired of the Kanati Sarkar Wang of Asia Crypt 20, I think. This is based on DDH. I mean, I'm, I'm not going like into the details of the, of the protocol here. This is on the paper. But the, the main idea is that I mean, the construction allows like for the firewall to like re-randomize everything. And then like on the opening, like readjust to, to what it did. And the, the kind of uh, theorem that, that we prove, I mean, that we call like this SRUC, which is like for subver subversion resistant, uh, resilient UC, which just means, I mean, the only difference is that, I mean, the, the environment and the adversary, they are quantified over this uh, species environment and adversity, which are, the ones that can do this type of specious corruption, like uh, uh, in the in the ideal model. So now, I mean that we have this uh, sanitizable commitment. So we want to build a coin toss. So now, I mean, we do it in this uh, F hat, uh, like uh, a sanitized con uh, hybrid model. So uh, so now, I mean th this. Uh, I mean, the cool part is that now, I mean, that was, now this is pretty simple because you already have the sanitizable commitment. <clears throat> so you basically just do like the coin toss as you would. I mean, you, you, like each uh, core just samples like some, some value SI, tries to commit to the functionality. Now the firewall that, uh, that you're implementing will sample like some randomness and send to the firewall to send to the, to the functionality to blind the, the, this input. And now the, the output is like this S where it's like, just like recombining all the, all the openings of the other parties combined with the stuff uh, of the core and the firewall, right? Just, just the SI and RI. And then, I mean, you can show that this is, now we call it this WSR because like this wrapped subversion resilient because this is like a normal functionality, right? So we need like this wrapper around it to be able to show. And this is also quantified over like a specious uh, environment and adversity. So yeah, I mean, this is like an illustration of how this would uh, look like actually. So the, the orange one is the coin toss protocol, which is using the, the green one, which is the commitment protocol you implemented. And this F set here is just like a, like a sanitized message transmission uh, functionality. I mean, the, where like all our protocols are built on top, but yeah, we don't need to worry about that now. So this is just to see like how the, the, the firewalls uh, and the cores will connect. And here you can see like the orange, since this is just a normal UC functionality, you don't need to implement like a sanitation interface, right? But the green one does, because like when you build the firewall for the coin toss, the, the, the firewall will, will communicate with, the, with the, the firewall of the commitment protocol. Uh, so now, I mean, how we build uh, malicious MPC like with, with uh, all this, right? Like just uh, combining the pieces. So we, we so we sanitize the GMW with uh, Goldreich, uh, Mikali Widgerson, 87. So this is like how to turn semi honors MPC into a maliciously secure MPC. The main idea is 
like all those parties, they run like this augmented coin toss. I mean, to get like a like a random string, where the the each party will use this as the random tape. The others will have like commitments to this, and then like the parties will commit to their inputs. And every message that they produce in the protocol, they will prove in zero knowledge that this message was computed correctly, like with respect to like input, transcript, and, and random tape of the party. So, I mean, one, one difficulty that we have is that we cannot prove uh, like things about uh, UC commitments, right? Because, I mean, there, there's no notion of having like a bit string or something that we can prove like a statement about. So, we cannot just use like the commitment plus the plus the coin toss and build it direct. So we need like this larger like commit and prove functionality that will do, we'll do like a commit and prove like inside of one functionality, right? So we also build that, but now we need like a sanitizable commit and prove, right? So, I mean, the, the difference uh, of the, the standard commit and prove is that now, I mean, the firewall, I mean, again, we'll have the option like to sanitize the inputs that send and sanitize like the, the statements that it's proving. So we, I mean, we build like this uh, this commit and prove in this uh, SRUC uh, model, and I mean the construction is just basically the construction of the commitment that we have plus uh, we randomizable NISIC, and then we can show that that we we can have the sanitizable commit and prove. Now, I mean, let's put all together and build this GMW using the commit and prove and the the sanitized uh, coin toss uh, functionality. So now, I mean, everything uh, becomes pretty simple, right? I mean, you have like the random tape generation. It's like uh, almost exactly as before, like all, all the parties will commit to a value. Like with this uh, FCMP uh, functionality, they will get uh, like so, some random string and then they build like this random tape, like uh, for uh, core I, which is this R hat I. And the other parties will have like the, the commitments to it. And now, I mean, they all commit like to their inputs to, to the semi honest protocol with the functionality. But now, I mean, the difference is that the firewall of this, uh, the commit and prove will not, will not change the message now, right? Because you, you don't want to change the message that, that you're running the, the protocol on. So now the firewall, I mean, ju just, uh, just uh, let the message go. And now the protocol execution, it's simple. You just run uh, like the, the semi honest protocol like with the, the committed inputs, the, the transcript and the random tape of each party. I mean, each party like r runs with their own and every new message that you produce, like uh, you, you, you ask the functionality to, to, to make this proof that this, uh, this message was produced correctly with respect like to all the messages that uh, committed to the transcript and the, the random tape. Right, and I mean, of course, like the, the this is the statement that is parameterized by this by this proof, uh, commit and proof functionality. Is is the statement that like this message is produced correctly and so on. So now the firewall can like sanitize the the statement. Just means that I mean, we'll check if this SI star, which is the output of the the FTOS uh, functionality, if the the transcript is correct until now and so on. And everything is good. I mean, just append this message to the transcript and just run everything all over again, right? So then we get to like a GMW, like sanitized. Yeah, so concluding, I mean, we, we yeah, we propose this new model, right? To, to handle subversions uh, and their composability. Uh, so, I mean, what else to be in here to, that can be done here is like, what, what other functionalities can we build uh, Firewalls for right, like uh, OT, zero knowledge, etc. Like, can, can we get more efficient MPC or like with adaptive corruptions or what? What are the possibilities? Yeah, and, and that that's all I have. Please. Thanks. Questions. Okay, let's uh, thank the speaker. Ah. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you for a good talk. Um, I was wondering how you uh, decided to keep track of corruptions in the model you made. 
Um, I know that like the kind of suggested way of doing this in the UC is having this like corruption aggregation ITI that somehow flo floats oh. around. Um, do you use that or did you use a different uh, way? No, I mean, we have this uh, like a specious uh, environment, right? That can just like uh, give the, the corruption instructions or like uh, malicious corruption or like semi-honest or specious for for each like uh, individual party that depending on on the pattern like on, on the table the, the, that's uh and you store uh, this in the party somehow that that this corruption has happened or yeah yeah the, like the, yeah this is uh, escaping track like by the hmm. by the, in the environment yeah yeah okay thank you sure any other questions oh let's thank the speaker again Thank you. And we have an announcement. Guys, okay, quick announcement.